Now, I really want you to understand and see the difference between deep fascia or fascia of muscles and fascicles. We know the definition already, but it's always good when we look at an image because then we can really see what's going on. Here you have three images that you find in your lab technology list, and we are focusing at this moment in the thigh area. We have the medial view, anterior view, and posterior view of the thigh. When we look at the anterior view, we can identify several muscles, such as the rectus femoris muscle. And you remember, the rectus femoris muscle was named rectus because rectus means straight, and it's going straight now. Femoris because the bone we have in our thigh is the femur. So this is the rectus femoris muscle. We have here in the lateral side of the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, in the medial side, the vastus medialis, and posterior to the rectus femoris right here, we would see the vastus intermedius. Together, the rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and vastus intermedius are four muscles, and these four muscles form the quadriceps femoris. And obviously, they were named quadriceps because the root quad means four, and we have four muscles. Like when we divided the abdominal cavity into quadrants, we had four quadrants. Now we have four muscles forming the quadriceps femoris, and the quadriceps femoris is in the anterior aspect of our type. Now, we also see right here, crossing from side to side, the longest muscle in our body, which is called sartorius, right? So this is the sartorius. This is all in the anterior aspect of the thigh. When we look at the posterior aspect of the thigh, here in the posterior view, we see the biceps femoris, biceps because it has two heads, and the biceps femoris is always lateral, because biceps femoris is on the fibula bone side, remember that? And the fibula is always lateral, fibula, lateral, fibula, lateral. So the biceps femoris is on the fibula bone side. Consequently, the biceps femoris is always lateral. When we look medially, we have the semitendinosus, and the semitendinosus is T4 tendinosus, T4 top, because it is on top of the semimembranosus. So here we have three muscles, Biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus, and these three muscles form the hamstrings. Here in the medial view, we can also see the semitendinosus on top of the semimembranosus. Now, what I want you guys to focus in the medial view is the gracilis muscle. Then we have right here the adductor longus, and here the adductor magnus. The adductor magnus is the magnificent one, is the big one. It goes underneath the gracilis and continues right here. So all this that starts here and goes underneath the gracilis and also goes underneath the sartorius is the adductor magnus. Now, let's imagine that we have a transverse section of the tie right here, and we will look at this transverse section from a superior view. And if we're looking at this transverse cut, this transverse section in a real person, the first thing we would see is the skin on the most outside part. And then underneath the skin, what do we have? We have the subcutaneous layer. Remember that? And the subcutaneous layer has adipose tissue in it. And that's why I drew it in yellowish. Now, we know the only bone we have in our tie is the femur. So we are drawing the femur bone right there. Now we can start adding the muscles. We know that in the anterior aspect of the thigh, we have the rectus femoris muscle. Medial to the rectus femoris, we have the vastus medialis. Lateral to the rectus femoris, we have the vastus lateralis. And posterior, we have the vastus intermedius. And crossing from side to side, we have right here the sartorius. So let's put the sartorius based on our cut level. The sartorius would be right here. When we look at the posterior aspect of the thigh, we would see the biceps femoris, always lateral, so it will have to be the same side of the vastus lateralis, right? We have the semitendinosus on top of the semimembranosus, and these are our hamstring muscles. And when we look in the medial side, we would find the gracilis, we would find the adductor longus, and the adductor magnus, correct? Now, guys, what happens is that when we look at our thigh, we have three different compartments. We have the anterior compartment, posterior compartment, and the medial compartment. The anterior compartment of our thigh includes the muscles in the anterior aspect of our thigh. The quadriceps femoris muscles and the sartorius. The posterior compartment of our thigh includes the hamstring muscles. And the medial compartment of our thigh includes the adductor muscles, which are the muscles that adduct our thigh. Gracilis, adductor magnus, and adductor longus. These green lines that I drew 
that are dividing our tie into compartments, anterior, posterior, and medial compartments, is the fascia, the deep fascia, the fascia of muscles. The fascia of muscles surrounds group of muscles and give extra stability and protection to those group of muscles. And this is literally what you're seeing in our tie. Now, a fascicle, if you recall, is the group of muscle fibers that are bundled together and surrounded by the perimesium. That is a fascicle. Now, I would like you to look at the rectus femoris muscle that we have here. Can you notice that the rectus femoris muscle has lines that we see running in this direction, and we also see lines running in this direction. Can you see that? So we have two different directions. Guys, these that we are seeing right here are all muscle fascicles running in this direction, and right here we have muscle fascicles running in this direction. Now, we know that a fascicle is a bundle of muscle fibers wrapped by perimesium, and we know that fascicles are wrapped together by the epimesium, and that forms the skeletal muscle. So, what I'm telling you is that all these fascicles are wrapped together by the epimesium, and then we have the rectus femoris muscle. And the rectus femoris muscle, together with the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis, the vastus intermedius, and the sartorius muscles, are wrapped around by the fascia of muscles, and that forms the anterior compartment of our thigh. So now you can really see the difference between fascia of muscles and fascicle. Now, it turns out that depending on the pattern of organization of the fascicles, we can classify the muscles into different groups. So if you look here at the sartorius muscle, this one, and we can also see in this image. You can clearly see that the fascicles in the sartorius muscle are all parallel to each other. And that's a different pattern than the pattern we saw in the rectus femoris muscle. And muscles that have fascicles that run parallel to one another are classified as parallel muscles. And the great majority of skeletal muscles in our body are parallel muscles. And we can have parallel muscles that have a fuse form shape. And we have parallel muscles that they do not have a fuse form shape. So they are non fuse form muscles. And they have more like a rectangular shape, like we are seeing here in the sartorius muscle. Now look at the biceps femoris muscle right here. We see the fascicles running parallel to one another. And we have this fuse form shape. Consequently, the biceps femoris muscle is a parallel muscle that falls into the category of fuse form muscle. You see the same structure in the biceps brachii muscle, right? The biceps brachii muscle is also a parallel muscle because the fascicles are running parallel to one another and we have this fuse form shape. So it is specifically classified as a fuse form parallel muscle. Now, if we look back at the rectus femoris muscle, we can see that all these muscle fascicles are connecting in an angle to a central tendon that is running through the length of the muscle. Can you see that? And when we have this arrangement of a tendon running through the length of a muscle with fascicles attaching to it in an angle, that is what we call pennate. Now, since in the rectus femoris muscle, we have fascicles on both sides of this central tendon. We specifically call the rectus femoris muscle a bipennate muscle. When we look at the deltoid muscle, which is this muscle that we find in our upper limb that has the delta letter shape, but it is upside down, and that's the reason why the deltoid was named deltoid, we see that the deltoid muscle has a central tendon that branches into more tendons. And we have one of these branches going to the posterior aspect, another one is staying laterally, and another one going anteriorly. And these tendon branches are now the point that the fascicles connect, right? Now, when we have this arrangement, we have fascicles 
in a multitude of directions, correct? And that's why the deltoid muscle is an example of a multipenate muscle, multi for a multitude of directions. Now, we also see in our body a central tendon with fascicles connecting in only one side of this central tendon. And with that information in mind, how do you think we classify this type of skeletal muscles? We classify them as unipenate. Uni making a reference to the unique side of the central tendon that has fascicles connecting. Now, an example of unipenate muscle is the muscle that allows us to flex our thumb. And that muscle is the flexor pollicis longus. It has the word pollicis in its name because that makes a reference to the pollux, which is the anatomical name for thumb. Now, besides having muscles that have fascicles that are all parallel to one another, which we classify as parallel muscles, besides having muscles that have a central tendon and have fascicles running in an angle along the length of the central tendon, which we call pennate muscles, we have muscles that cover a considerably large area and all the fascicles, they converge to a single point of attachment. And when we have this arrangement, we classify the muscle as a convergent muscle because all fascicles are converging to a single point. And an example of a convergent muscle is the pectoralis major muscle. Now, if we look around the lips of Philip and also around the eye, we see muscle fascicles arranged in a concentric way, like circles around an opening. And when we have these circle-like arrangements around an opening, we classify the muscle as a circular muscle. And examples of circular muscles are the orbicularis oris, around the oral cavity, and the orbicularis oculi, around the eye. 